hundreds of years ago, a supreme predator stalked the UK. The lynx, a cat the size of a Labrador that hunts by stealth. Deforestation, a decline in prey species, and human persecution are all thought to have contributed towards the lynx extinction in Britain by the late Middle Ages. But now, could the cat be on the verge of a comeback? The potential reintroduction of lynx is now being publicly raised in what could be one of the most ambitious rewilding projects ever attempted in the UK. The Highlands of Scotland have been put forward as one of the most appropriate places for a reintroduction, but what might this mean in practice? Peter Cairns is a founder of Scotland The Big Picture, a conservation initiative supporting rewilding. There's a moral obligation in my book. Um, we got rid of these animals and now we sit in judgment over other countries. We're asking India to look after their tigers, we're asking Africans to look after their lions, but we're not prepared to have large predators here in our own backyard. Are you just trying to kind of wind back the clock to a halcyon period when great beasts were roaming these forests? No, I don't think so. I think rewilding, as it's often referred to, is very much about looking forward. It's about setting the clock back in motion. So how would a uh, lynx reintroduction affect the, the wildlife in, in these beautiful pine forests? Well, lynx predominantly prey on, on medium-sized woodland deer. So in Scotland's case, that would be roe deer, it would be seeker deer, potentially red deer calves. And of course, what that does is reduces the, the grazing pressure that these herbivores bring to the forest. It would allow the forest to breathe and allow it to regenerate. Do you think that you'll see lynx back in these forests in your lifetime? That's a tricky question. I'd like to think that, given time, the public would come to, to, to love this animal once they know more about it and to see that the, the benefits far outweigh the disadvantages. Scientific analysis has suggested that a viable population of around 400 lynx could survive in the Scottish Highlands, with smaller numbers possible in southern Scotland and some of the wilder areas of England, like Kielder Forest. But not all are convinced by the arguments for rewilding, with livestock farmers like Alistair McLennan remaining sceptical. I think we should look after the species that we have here. We've got capercaillie, black grouse, red squirrel, uh, wildcat. We spent a lot of money on these species to try and maintain them. My understanding is this is an animal that's very shy and it's essentially a woodland animal. You know, here your farm, you're, you're grazing open land. Mm -hmm. But if you look around, we've quite a lot of woodland around our fields and you know, it, there's nothing going to stop it nipping out of the wood to uh, take sheep. Were the lynx to be reintroduced, um, is there any mitigation that you can think of that might help farmers? I think compensation is a complex issue, uh, although they see it as a very simple issue. You know, one dead sheep, you compensate for a sheep. But that's not the way it goes. I've sheep in this field, there's 40 sheep, but there's 120 lambs inside these sheep in this field. So um, it might kill a sheep and that'll be three lambs inside it. But the rest of them that have had a chase around might also lose their lambs, and you don't know that for maybe weeks afterwards. Of course, one positive benefit would be a, a huge potential increase in tourism. Yeah, and uh, we ourselves have uh, self-catering properties, so we benefit from tourism. But uh, the lynx is a very elusive species, and it's nocturnal. So how many tourists are actually going to see it? It's a complex picture. Yes, absolutely. I've heard arguments for and against reintroducing lynx to the UK, but to really get an understanding of what it might be like to bring these animals back to our landscapes, I need to go somewhere where they've already done it. So next, I'm headed off to the mountains of northern Germany. Since the 1970s, lynx have been reintroduced in several European countries, including Switzerland, France, Poland... And here in northern Germany. I'm in the Harz National Park to look at the impacts of lynx reintroduction and to see what could happen if we were to follow the same initiative back in the UK. Wild lynx are incredibly shy, so realistically, the only way I'm going to see one is in the enclosure of the Harz Lynx Project. I'm under the guidance of project leader Ola Anders. I have to say, it's quite unnerving, because I know there's a big animal in here that's almost certainly looking at me at the moment. Here it is, here it is. Wow, look at that. Sharpening its claws, the killing weapons. 
I can't believe how big it is. I'm in awe of that animal. It's beautiful, it's powerful, and it's totally at one with this incredible environment here. Since the project began in 2000, 24 lynx have been released back into the wild. Ola is taking me higher into the mountains where they roam free. So how is the project going since you started? Well, uh, it's, it's doing quite well at the moment. Uh, the uh, number of lynx is increasing, but the, uh, the range of the lynx is also increasing. Lynx has left the Hartz Mountains already and is uh, reproducing in other areas. Slowly spreading across northern Germany. There are now around 50 adult lynx and up to 40 juveniles in the area. It'll be a long time before the ecological impacts are fully known, but they are clearly finding plenty of prey in the forest. We have a lynx kill. Wow, Ola, look at that. Yeah, that's a red deer calf. This one has been killed by a lynx. What's their main prey here? The main food here is uh, roe deer. But uh, we have some red deer specialists among our lynxes. This is a big animal to take down. This is a big animal, and this animal is much heavier than the lynx. They appear to be thriving here, but I'm eager to seek out opinion from those whose livelihoods could be impacted by the lynx. Jan Tierling keeps fallow deer close to the Hartz Mountains and has lost some to lynx. Well, I lost uh, seven years, and it was horrible for me to see all the dead animals around. But we got in contact with the Hearts project, and so we we got our money back and got help to build up the, the fence. But obviously, you can't put an electric fence around every population of livestock. What other ways can you protect them? If uh, the lynx gets in, in conflict with uh, people or with uh, deers or sheep, I think we have to control them. It's great to see the lynx back, but uh, we have to uh, look that uh, we can live with him together, side by side. Gaining public support will be the key to any reintroduction back in the UK. In the Hearts Mountains, the image of the lynx is everywhere, and it has become a mascot for the area. The lynx enclosure is a focal point that draws in the tourists. Are you happy? Yeah. Feeding time is a highlight at the enclosure, and Ola has devised a lynx challenge to help us capture their athletic prowess. Oh. Oh. Lynx are ambush hunters, attacking their prey from behind cover rather than chasing it down. They're capable of jumping over two meters in the air. But what do the tourists make of this impressive predator living here? It's a good idea to take them back in the forests we have here, I guess. It's amazing that we got the big predator back in Germany, and, and I think it's, it's amazing for their hearts. It shows our good nature here. This project has worked hard to keep people on side. We would have to do the same if we are to have any chance of seeing Britain's lost big cat return to our own wild places.